Welcome everyone. Today is going to be fun because I'm going to be building a really unique section of guardrail for the Star Wars office space. So I'd like you guys to join me and I'll walk you through on how I build it right here on the fixture table. This is the shape that I'd like to create. This post will be attached to the edge of the mezzanine. These are the components that are going to make up this post. They are made from 3 8 by 3 inch wide pieces of flat bar that have been bent in the press brake at certain locations according to the drawings. So the goal for me is to position all of these components together precisely exactly like the drawings call out for. Because if I deviate from the drawing then the other components that tie into this section of common railing will not fit. So it's really important that we get this right. So I'm going to be talking about two different methods to fixture this railing up. And we're going to talk about the first one right now, which is going to be the most simplest way we do it. So the first problem we have to deal with is myself. I manually bent all these pieces. So the question is, did I get them right? Did I get them wrong? Did I get these lengths correct? Did I put the bend in the right place? And is the bend the correct angle? That's what we're going to have to find out. So you can see there's a lot to go wrong here. So what I want to do is have the fixture table help me identify, did I do a good job or did I screw up and need to redo this? <laughs> So most of the time you're going to get a drawing that's going to give you the lengths of all your pieces and parts. And in this case, I have locations of all the joints and the lengths of the pieces. And I'm going to use a Sharpie marker and we're going to basically draw on the table this exact shape. I'm just going to give myself a zero, zero point, something to square off of. This is going to be my reference line for the entire build here. I'm just going to scribe a line with my Sharpie. Nice line there. So I'm trying to get all the parallel lines drawn of all these termination points. Okay, six and a quarter, nine, 25 and nine sixteenths, 26 and a half, 33 and seven eighths, 36 and 11 sixteenths, 38 inches. There we go, got all my hash marks. And then I'm gonna come down here and do the same thing on the bottom and then we're gonna create a line. Six and a quarter, nine, 25 and nine sixteenths, 26 and a half, 33 seven eighths, 36 and 11 sixteenths, 38 inches. Now we just connect the dots. Now the problem that I have with doing something like this I am in my own way here, which means is, did I measure correctly? Did I, am I on this side of the Sharpie line? I'm on the right side of the Sharpie line, left side of the Sharpie line, right side. There's some serious human error that could get put into this. Okay, so now I have a, a grid going this way of all my sharp points. Now I need to go the other direction and find the intersection. We're now at the point where I need to give myself my zero, zero. By selecting this, this is where everything's gonna get built off of. Right there, zero comma zero. Now we go find our same points again and we go backwards. So 12 and 3 eighths of an inch. 16, right here, nine, there. Eight and nine sixteenths. Two and five sixteenths. Okay, so I need a minus a half. So it looks like we're going to negative territory here. So we got 13 sixteenths, right between here. Four and 13 sixteenths. Get all the measurements. All right, now I do the same thing over here. <laughs> okay, zero, zero again. I'm gonna lay out all the same intersection points. Nine, nine, 16, 12 and three eighths, eight and nine sixteenths, four and five, 15 sixteenths, two and five sixteenths, Minus a half. Four and 13. Did I get it wrong over there? Looks like I did. 15 sixteenths. This is why I'm really not a big fan of this layout method. One of the reasons why this trick works is because my project is pretty small. <laughs> if this is a much bigger project, this would be harder to do. Okay, so we line everything up. Now we just circle the intersections. That's important. So nine, nine, right there. Bang. Six, 16. Four and five sixteenths. Right there, eight and nine sixteenths, four and 13 sixteenths, minus a half. All right, whew. I'm gonna put the time on the screen how long that actually took me to lay this grid out. But now the cool part is I'm gonna connect the dots. So what I mean by that is I'm gonna follow the shape of this outline that I wanna recreate here. So all I gotta do now is hit my points with my marker and I, hopefully I'm on the correct side of the marker and I did a good job. <laughs> Those are only lines that a welder would love right there. That's a serious mangled mess. As you can see, that's the shape that I'm trying to recreate. 
approximately, I hope. <laughs> so is that really supposed to be 135? If that's the case, I'm way off. Okay, so where did I screw up? Double check your work. 11 and 11 sixteenths. Quick tip for a marker. So I'm a little bit off. If you want to erase marker line, sharp your marker, rub it over. Eight, nine, 10, 11. Boom, right there. Okay, moment of truth. Is this dirty? Ta-da! Pretty close. Not perfect, but pretty dang close. Pretty, 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 pretty close. So I like to use the coordinate system. I think it's a much accurate way to lay out the lines instead of using angles, because an angle can change relationship. And it looks like we're close as I can get with a Sharpie marker. Okay, there's my outline. And now what I'm gonna do is grab my fixtures. And what I'm gonna do here, is we're gonna start bringing my fixtures into place and giving myself some hard stops. What I mean is I'm gonna move this corner until it touches the corner of the Sharpie line. And if it's too long or too short, that means I need to jump over to a 16th of an inch. Uh, the reason why I'm not using the regular slot on these is because I have found that no matter how tight you tighten some of these bolts, these can still slide back or move around on you. Then you're like, oh, what happened? I really do recommend using the teeth. There you go. I got the corner of the fixture right there on the center of the line. And we're just gonna walk ourselves along the line, placing fixtures, at least two on every line so that we can have something to bump our parts into. This is a tedious process of just placing fixtures around the perimeter, right in the center of the line. So as you can see, as we start working our way around, these two stops now allow this angle to be set. So now what we put our two parts up here, we're gonna rest it up against the straight edge of the corner of this. Nice, accurate way to set an angle. So as we continue on, you see we need to basically map out this little weird jig jog. And what you can do is use a pin. I'm away from that line there a little bit, but what shim or spacer can get me there? So 3 eighths is a little bit too long. There's the 7 16th, and that looks pretty good. That's one way to do it, you do shims. Another way to do it is you get a dog leg fixture like this, and then we line it up. So two different ways to do the same thing. There you go. But how long did that take me? I don't know, we're gonna put that on the screen. Moment of truth. Let's see how good of a job I did bending the parts. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> Not so good. <laughs> All right. Ooh. I know most of you guys don't have access to a CNC water jet cutter. Let's talk about this. I have a weird bust going on here. I'm obviously the problem, but where did I screw up? Did I screw up bending this part or did I screw up laying out these lines? This is why I'm really not a big fan of this layout method. This is where everything's based off of, right? So I gotta go backwards now and see, did I screw this line up somewhere? Or, and I need to go back and check my parts. Yeah, I did screw that up. My bad. This intersection should, should have been that intersection, you loser. <laughs> hey, I'm human, you know, this is real life. I know what you're saying. Jason, how can you do that? I would have never screwed up. So the thing is, I don't want to screw up. I just screw up on accident. Not purposely trying to make a mistake. <laughs> okay, let's move all our fixtures back. Hey, as long as I don't have to pull the grinder out, I'm happy. Okay, now let's check it again. Look at that. Much better. Pretty cool, but there's something wonky up here now. This piece also does not fit. So this piece of flat bar is supposed to be touching those. So did I bend this wrong or is this fixture in the wrong spot? Yikes. But it looks like this bend is right. So it looks like this is too short. So I have my parts in the fixture here and I'm finding a little bit of discrepancies. And where could that come from? Maybe the CAD model from the bend radius that was accounted for all the parts doesn't match my die in my press brake. So therefore my bend radiuses are a little bit different than what 
the engineer specced out or designed for. So we're having a little bit of short distances on some areas. Is that the customer's problem or is that my problem? Well, obviously it's my problem. Or maybe my parts have been made correctly and I did a horrible job laying out the fixtures because there's some human error in this whole grid system and placing all the parts. So what I'd like to do for confirmation is do a fixturing part two, which means I want to use the grid pattern on the table to position the fixtures and not my tape measure. And we will use a CAD of exactly where to place every single fixture on this table. This is my preferred method, no layout necessary. And then we'll time myself, how long does it take me to place the fixtures this way versus the old school way of laying all out with the tape measure in the grid lines. So let's start fresh. If you look at our diagram, A through Z up the side. So it just so happens that this table has 26 holes, A through Z all the way to 50 holes. So now that we have system here, we can look at our drawing and we know exactly where to place every fixture. So a good example of that is like this fence block. I can see the four holes, four C. And we just walk ourselves all the way around following the map. G3. All right, so for the tooth block, I can see that I'm in the fourth row in J. So we just follow the grid up. That's my hole right there, one that I put my finger in. Now what I'm gonna do, put the washer down, put the fixture on top, put both pins in the hole. Now the drawings call out for a 3 8 of an inch extension which means how far off the tooth block is pushed out. And as you can see, that's zero. And every distance in between here is how far out is it extended away from this hole. And there's a scale on the side of it that I can just match up to an eighth of an inch. Once I get it there, I just lock it down and reset. No tape measure, it's locked in position. It can't slide back, can't move forward. Side to side, you're good to go. Following the map, 6K. 10K, 22G, B, 19, 9 Okay, so I'm to the point now where I'm gonna use some spacer blocks to get some offsets. Bada bing, bada boom. All right, how long did that take me? So that was about 10 minutes approximately. I'll put it on screen how long that took me to get this set up. So one of the reasons why I like this setup by having this map, you have to think about a production workshop. I could be working on this project for a few days, then a rush order comes in. I can clear off the table, do the new job, and then come back at a later date and set the fixtures back up in the same exact spot. With no interruption, you don't have to grind the fixtures loose. If this is a table where you have to weld the fixtures to, this is a very fast breakdown and reset up. And this, having this map is great. Unlike the layout line method where you could potentially wipe your lines loose <laughs> free and then have to redraw them all out every single time. Okay, let's try this out. Let's see what happens. Okay, so far so good. Pretty close here. Yes, that looks marvelous. Touching, 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 touching. Not quite touching. Touch. Don't touch. Okay. Part is just barely, but pretty dang close. Overall, this fits so much better. I was a little worried before. So where I was concerned before is I had a big gap over here last time. I need to push this bar back into this stop. Overall, it fits much better in this fixture than it did the other one, which leads me to believe that my layout lines had some serious tolerance stacking and those little tiny errors added up to this not being correct. It is amazing how much better this fits in my new fixture here. Just to prove a point, I know most of you guys don't have access to a CNC water jet cutter to show you how good this does actually fit with the CAD placement fixtures without the layout lines. Let's see how well this fits. <laughs> uh, look at that, like a glove. Nice and tight, everything's where it's supposed to be. So before it did not fit like this. My layout lines were all over the place. 
This is why I really love this method of CAD placement fixtures. Gives you a real good accurate placement. We're using the machined holes and machine fixtures, not me human. <laughs> really, really good. Well, I've learned something through this experiment. I thought I was really good at layout lines and being able to read a tape measure, put the line where it needs to go. I thought I was really methodical on my grid lines and my practice of using XY coordinate system to remove errors in placement of the fixtures. But man, what a difference it is by having the table holes locate the fixtures for me instead of me reading a tape measure. I would never have guessed there was that much of a difference between the two ways to set up the table. You win. I'm a firm believer in CAD. It's pretty accessible to everybody now to be able to set up fixtures and take a part from your imagination and kind of draw it and then be able to put it on your fixture table. If you guys need help with some CAD and some strategies there, please go to the forum. There's many of us on that platform to help you, myself included. So post your problem there and we're sure to help. So hopefully you guys learned something like I do in every one of these videos. But for now, I'm gonna have to leave you because I have a lot of fabrication left to do to finish the sci-fi office project. So until then, I'll see you guys on the next Fixturing Fundamental video.